I'm in the Athi Kapiti Plains, just 50 kilometers east of the city of Nairobi. This is home to thousands of wildebeest, zebras, antelopes, and many other species of wildlife. And it's also home to the world's highest densities of cheetah. And that's why I'm here. We need to save this open space. As you can see behind me, the city of Nairobi is developing very quickly. Industries, agriculture, fences, housing estates, they're eating into this ecosystem. Without this open space, the animals can't move between the protected areas from Nairobi National Park all the way down south to Amboseli. We can't stop development, but we can be smart about it. And that's why we need your help. The best way to appreciate this vast landscape is from the air. You can see the pressure of development pushing in on the northern edge. We're so close to the city, yet the presence of cheetah illustrates just how wild this habitat really is. Scientist Simon Thompson has lived amongst these cheetahs for the last 27 years. Cheetahs are the flagship species of this area, and to get to know the population, we need to identify every single individual. Just out over there. Yes, that's her. Look. Oh my god, that is. With her cubs as well. Wow, this is incredible. Wow. Can you see them? Can you still see them, Simon? Uh, no, they're banished. I can't see them. Yeah, you can see her. Look, there she is. Mother and the four cubs. So one of the interesting ways of being able to identify a cheetah is looking at these three ridges right here. One ridge, center ridge, really quite sharp. Other cats usually have a bump, but they have nothing like as sharp as this ridge right here. So we'll just take a few measurements. D4. Write that down. So that's one way of identifying cheetahs. Of course, the other way is looking at their spot. Should we go have a look? Yeah. So these are two pictures taken many months apart. And this is one cheetah just running away. So you've got the, the uh, pattern here, which is what? one, two, three bars, how many dots? One, two, and then we've got this pattern here and the kissing dots on there. So if you remember that particular pattern, just starting from there down to there, and then look at this. One, two, three, same dots, mm -hmm. and then the kissing dots there. So this individual is obviously the same as the one we took a picture of a couple of months previously. Hi, Cosmos. Ecologist Cosmos Wambua has been studying cheetahs here for nearly 10 years. With all the pressure on, on the land, on the area surrounding this, 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 these ranches, um, it's just amazing how so many animals can survive in such a small area. But and definitely we do know that they go across um, all the way to Selengay and probably further on to you, Amboseli. You think they go all the way west. down to Amboseli that way? How far sure. is that? How far is that? Um, on a straight line, I would say probably around 90 kilometers. It's, it's really prime for cheetah and they, they do seem to adapt quite well. Um, but you know, the, the long term, long term future survival of the species mm. uh, will require much more than conservation of small areas, rather more of a landscape ecology conservation um, outlook so uh, to avoid issues of inbreeding they need to be able to move from one area mm. to another the prey base is there uh, lots of congonies lots of uh, grants gazelle although there is a, a need for continued monitoring as you know in the entire landscape um, so that we can be able to know exactly um, how the prey base is also reacting to all the changes that are taking place around uh, these farms Morning, Professor. Morning, Paula. How are you? Very good. Welcome. Welcome to Lisa. Welcome. Thank you. Professor Mbithi is one of the key landowners in the proposed conservancy. 
We are determined, very determined, that uh, this will be a wildlife conservation area. The animals are ahead of us, or everybody in our creation deserves a living, their space. Nobody has got any more right to life more than the animals, the cheetah, the lions, and all the others. When we came in, we put in Ketro, <clears throat> eventually we found that uh, the wildlife survived better. The zebra, the eland, all the others. But we have found a tremendous opportunity cost to all these. Uh, the other day, uh, people came, uh, they asked me to give them 2,000 acres to build um, a village, residential village, 65,000 people. And uh, they would give me any price I wanted. Uh, one month later, others came and they wanted to build a university. If we've got a population pressure, and we do have it, we're growing at one million people per year. We cannot sort them out by settling them on every piece of land. We've got to get employment creation in the urban areas, in factories, in other places. Most of Kenya's wildlife now lives outside of the protected areas, and private landowners and communities are essential to conserving this national heritage. The proposed Athikapiti Conservancy is a conservation charity that will secure an area three times the size of the Nairobi National Park and protect tens of thousands of animals. It will restore an ancient migration route from Nairobi to the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. Cheetah, wildebeest, zebra and many other species will now be safe. We need help to secure this land through leases, easements and purchases. We're setting up anti-poaching patrols, developing income generating enterprises and conducting research and monitoring of the wildlife. Join us, support the Athikapiti Conservancy and help save one of Africa's most important conservation areas. Kenya has to understand that for our long-term survival, we must keep our wildlife safe and free. We must keep it.